Joining us on the line now, KT McFarland, National uh, Security Analyst for the Fox News Channel, all round good person. We love when she's on the show. Uh, KT, look, uh, the situation in Ukraine. I'm looking at the headlines here. It says, uh, are you ready for this? U.S. and NATO warn Russia against further intervention in Ukraine. I guess if I am uh, Vladimir Putin, I say, well, that's it. I got to get out. Of, I got to get out of the Ukraine now. Ooh, I'm scared. Yeah. Yeah, look, Putin has spent 15 years carefully setting this dinner table. He's got everything in place, and he can now eat whatever he wants, whenever he wants, and nobody's going to stop him. And certainly the United States, you know, we make these, you know, yet again another threat. There are going to be serious consequences, but then nothing ever happens. And the reality of it is is that Europeans, um, who are the ones who are, are most have most ability to affect Russia, they're, they're not interested or willing or able to take strong sanctions, either banking sanctions or energy industry sanctions. And so Putin takes what he wants. I, I'm one of the people, though, who doesn't think he needs to even move the tanks across the border. I think he's got everything. Just the threat. Yeah, just the threat, just the realization on the part of Ukraine and others that nobody's going to come to their assistance. Um, I think the also with, with Putin saying every ethnic Russian and all these different countries has a Russian passport. He grants them automatic Russian citizenship and then sends in provocateurs to stir up trouble. And then what happens is at the end of the day, that country, either those regions will break away like Crimea did and join Russia, or more likely that the pro-Russian um, leader will be elected and chosen, and they will all make their separate peace with Russia. And that John Kerry, Secretary of State, I mean, boy, he is a sharp, sharp guy. Because he has, he said, and he's ready. They ready for this? He thinks that Russia is trying to destabilize Eastern Ukraine. Yeah, well, that's a sudden realization. <laughs> um, and this is from the same Secretary of State, who's said, "Well, Russia's doing this only out of a sense of weakness. Um, that you know they're so 19th century when the rest of the world has moved past what they're doing and changing borders." I, I think it just the thing that bothers me. I mean, I don't mind a learning curve. Where if, if an but they don't learn. That's they don't the... know, and they, they deliberately don't. It's, it's a naivete combined with arrogance so that they continue to insist the rest of the world has to see things the way they do when the rest of the world says, come on, they're rolling their eyes. But meanwhile, KT McFarland, uh, swinging over to the Pacific, North Korea has suddenly started to make a lot of noise again. I guess they're trying to get attention for more foreign aid. Uh, mm -hmm. North Korea and South Korea traded some artillery uh, late last week, and yeah. now the U.S. is sending over some ships to protect Japanese ships, um, uh, missile defense ships to protect Japan against North Korea. What's happening over there, and should we be paying attention? I think if you're in Washington, you ought to, every spring, look out the window. If it's cherry blossom time, it's North Korea crisis time. <laughs> it seems that way. It is, but every year, and here's why they do it. Uh, first of all, we have an exercise with the South Koreans we've had forever in the early spring, and that's the excuse the North Koreans use, but the reality is they're running out of food. By spring, the food stocks and food stores and transportation fuel and fuel oil that they've got, all those stocks are running low. So they provoke a crisis. The world comes running. The world says, ooh, 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 what can we do to stop this crisis from escalating? You have nuclear weapons. Um, and so the North Koreans then say, well, you know, let's defuse this crisis. Bye. Hmm. And then we rush in with, as you point out, foreign aid. Then the crisis abates until next cherry blossom time. Now, the problem with it is is the potential for miscalculation. Yeah, well, I mean, this is their business plan, basically, for lack of a better term, to keep uh, uh, some kind of food on people's plates in that country. But what if we just ignored them? What if we just stopped responding? I think that's a plan. Hmm. Uh, you know, I think the whole issue here really is is China is the country that is most equipped and probably the only country equipped to deal with North Korea. And our relationship with the Chinese is, is not good. Um, and the Chinese have been very content historically to have North Korea do all this. They like the fact that North Korea is at a sort of boiling point. It gets everybody nervous, everybody anxious. What the Chinese don't want is for it to boil over. So all the countries in the region, including the United States, say, yikes, we better pay attention, we better rearm, we better especially in the case of, say, Japan or South Korea, maybe we should investigate having our own nuclear weapons programs. 
The Chinese don't have an interest in that. But the thing that struck me about this Hegel trip to China... I was going to ask you about that. that He got to see their aircraft carrier, their one and only aircraft carrier. Yeah, I mean, that's... I mean, I guess that's a a big deal. I don't think that's as big a deal as the the two comments that the head of the Chinese military and then Secretary Hegel were sort of trading barbs at each other, where Hegel was saying, now, you guys don't get any ideas in your head just because Russia could annex Crimea doesn't mean you guys should think you can access and annex any of the regions in the South China Sea. There are several series of islands that are several countries claim ownership for. But Hegel was saying, so I'm warning you guys, you know, serious consequences if you think you can do what Russia did. And at the same time, the, the Chinese defense minister said, don't you think China can be contained? We, our new situation in the world means that, you know, we're on we're in a situation where we're going to reclaim our territories and don't think that you can stop us. But, so but that's, a, that's, a, that's a pretty bold thing for the Chinese. I had a, a, a conversation one time with a former joint chairman of the Joint Chiefs who said that they are extremely worried about China because, because they're spending a lot of money on their defense. Well, it's not just what they're, they're spending a lot of money, yes, total, but they're also doing certain things. They're spending it in ways that um, it would exploit our weaknesses, particularly in the cyber area and particularly in the, in the navies and, and what, what's called access area denial issues. But we don't need to go into that. That's sort of in the weeds. But it's what the Chinese are doing, and it's also the increased aggressive tone of the Chinese. Mm-hmm. But, if, you know, then the other thing is that the administration, same way Secretary Kerry said the Russians are doing what they're doing out of weakness, um, the defense department official, author, without being named, said, well, the Chinese are doing this because they're not sure about their place in the world. They're doing this out of a sense of weakness, too. You know, this is like the kid on the playground who keeps getting his lunch money stolen, mm-hmm. and instead of fighting back or instead of standing up to the bullies, he says, well, they're only doing it because they're insecure. And they well, I mean, I mean then just, let's just point out, the Chinese are spending a lot of money on their military. The Russians have all these expansionist ideas. And our message to the world is, we need to cut back our military. On the very same day that the Secretary of Defense announced to the world that he was gutting the defense budget and that the United States would no longer have the same role in the world that it had, has before, the Ch- Russian defense minister was announcing that Russia was negotiating with seven countries to expand its naval presence around the world yeah. and at the same time was building up the military. Always to go into Ukraine. Yeah. All right, KT, always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank I, you. I think I feel better about the world. I'm Actually, no, I really don't. No, no, but five <laughs> years from now, we're going to be on a roll. There we go. All right. Thank you.